In the world of conversion optimization, heat map tracking is very popular. Heat maps are used to back up theories and demonstrate behavior on specific pages. However, there's a lot you can uncover, but it's sometimes a challenge to get started. In this video, I will share what you should look at in heat maps to learn more about your visitors. Hello viewers, I am Wasim Bashir and I work as a B2B marketing consultant. If you want to learn more about marketing and lead generation to grow your business, you are in the right place. But before going deeper into what you should look for in a heat map analysis, let's understand what a heat map is and its types. A heat map is a graphical representation of data that uses color to represent values. Depending on the type of heat map, you will be able to analyze where visitors point their mouse the most and how their cursor moves while using the website or a landing page. Heat maps show how users interact with your page and which parts of your page are under optimized and less popular. By the way, I've covered a separate video in which I cover why you should use heat maps and how heat maps work their types and how to install heat map tools. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend you head over to watch that video first before you continue this one. Types of heat maps. There are differences to heat maps and the most popular tools will usually will have all these variations. Click map. Click map is the most popular heat map and will show you where visitors are clicking on a web page. Scroll map. This is a visual representation of how deeply a visitor scrolls on your page. With this heat map, you can learn more about where visitors are abandoning your page. Mouse tracking. Mouse tracking maps or hover maps are heat maps that show mouse cursor movements on a page. These maps show hotspots on your page and how visitors interact. What to look in heat maps to understand and track users' behavior. Before I start, I want to ensure that you understand the difference between analyzing heat maps and Google Analytics. Heat maps will give you a great deal of info on what visitors are clicking on and how much time they take to click, how far they scroll the page and more. However, Google Analytics will tell you how much time they spend on the page or the engagement rate and conversion rate, etc. Both these sets of data will help you to make better data-driven decisions. So here is the juicy part now. Let's discuss how you can interpret heat maps and then come up with a set of actions. Do users see important content? You might be thinking the same thing. What's the most important content for a typical landing page? The answer is, it's, it's value proposition. Value proposition highlights why somebody should pick your product or service over your competitors. Value proposition in itself is a very big topic which I'll cover in future videos. But for now, let's focus on product value proposition. Just like the main company value proposition, a value proposition of a product highlights why a customer should buy this product from you versus somebody else. Let's check this example from Instahop. If you just focus on the hero section, the headline has the text, early morning cenote swim. The headline is good for creating relevancy as the visitor might be looking for a cenote swimming experience. However, the headline doesn't create any excitement and surely doesn't bring out the value proposition. Next up is the subheading. Start the day fresh by swimming in the transparent waters of the spectacular cenote, followed by a delicious meal. A great morning routine sets the tone for your day. Again, although the subheading creates some emotion, however, it still doesn't focus on any value proposition. But when we scroll down, there's quite a lot of value that Instahop offers compared to others. Now let's head over to the heat map and see what visitors are doing on the page. When clicking the heat map, we can see only 57% of visitors are scrolling past the sections, what's included, what to expect and only 33% of visitors check the main pricing difference, which is pretty huge. So one hypothesis would be to test whether to change the headline and subheading to include the main value proposition of the product. One of my favorite reports in Crazy Egg is the Confetti Report. And under Confetti Report, you can click on dead links. Dead links are basically those links which visitors are clicking on your page, but they don't actually do anything. So think of them as those sections where people are just trying to click with the intention that maybe it will either open a page or open a pop-up or you know have some more information. So if I go under the confetti report, 
dead clicks and enable dead clicks, I can see exactly which areas of the page people are clicking with the intention that they might need more information. So, but don't get slightly confused here because there could be chances where visitors are reading and they're also clicking, so that's very normal. And looking at this report, it seems like a very typical report where visitors are actually reading the text, but there is one interesting bit here, which is the navigation. So although these are clickable links, but it seems like visitors are clicking some of the areas around it. So maybe the text size is slightly small and we can maybe make it bigger in the next version. And when I enable active clicks, I can see exactly the links which are getting clicked. And because why choose us is a link because it points to another section on the page, that is the normal accepted behavior. But using dead clicks, I can see maybe we should increase the font size. Um, there's another interesting bit which I can learn from here. For example, the frequently asked questions. I can see which frequently asked question or which question on this list gets the most number of clicks. So that can tell me whether I should push it to the top of the list or maybe the one question which doesn't get enough clicks, I can replace it with something else. This is really powerful and using both of these reports, you can understand a bit more about what visitors are doing on your page. So based on these observations, we can create a new set of hypotheses to test. Remember to document them in a place like Google Sheets so that you can later prioritize them based on the effort required and the impact. One other report which I really like is Rage Clicks. Under the Confetti report, you can find it and you can enable Rage Clicks. Rage Clicks are basically those clicks which visitors are doing on your page, which means they're repeatedly clicking on something with the intention that they might be searching for or looking for more information. And one of the ways you can improve it is either removing that element or adding more information, whether it's a button or a pop-up. But again, this report will really help you understand where visitors are looking for more information. So for example, on this page, I can see there's some rage clicks happening here, especially on this section. And then if I scroll down, there are more rage clicks, which are repeated taps or clicks on this section. Again, as a hypothesis, I can come up with a new variation, maybe add more information if somebody clicks on this section, or I can remove some of the elements which are not really buttons or things. So for example, this graphic here adds no value to any kind of conversion. So I can replace this image with something which is more flat and doesn't look like a button. So again, with the combination of rage clicks and dead clicks, you can get more insights in order to improve your landing page. Find where users are experiencing issues across devices. Mobile and desktop consumers likely see your website differently. Your page may appear more ordered and compact on mobile devices, while it may appear empty and unorganized on desktops. On a desktop, important content shows up immediately, but it may be hidden way below the fold on mobile devices, where many users do not even see it. For this example, I will only use a scroll map, but make sure you optimize your landing page by using other reports. Scroll heat map lets you see the percentage of visitors who scroll to certain parts of the page before leaving. This data is important because it can help you determine important factors, such as the length of your content and the placement of your call to action buttons. Let's take a look at this example from Instahop and check both the desktop and mobile heat maps. In this example, the brighter sections have been viewed many times and the darker areas have been viewed the least. As you can see, with the help of a scroll map, we can easily check impressions on landing page sections with a popularity ratio. Above the fold is visited by most of the visitors and at the bottom, this landing page gets a better response than the middle section, where the popularity is around 47%, which kind of tells me visitors scroll the full page until the end. As a test, we can improve the middle section of the page by adding some more interactivity or we can in fact reduce the length of the page and make it compact so that most of the valuable information is available towards top of the page. In the mobile version you can notice only about the fold section gets the most views and visitors end up scrolling the mobile page less than the desktop version. This data tells me that we need to improve the landing page for mobile devices and work on the barely scrolled areas. So hopefully now you can see why it's important to use heat map tools to analyze user behavior on mobile and desktop. 
observe challenges users face across different devices and determine changes that need to be made for your landing page for better conversions. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope now you can see how you can use heat maps to learn more about your users. If you got value from this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you have any queries regarding this video, you can ask me in a comment box below. I'd be happy to help. If you want to learn more about heat map tools like Hotjar, Crazy Egg and Microsoft Clarity and how to set them up using Google Tag Manager, then check out my video on the left here. Thank you, see you next time.